cross grain of a knit. The cross grain has a fair amount of give, and we're going to make use of that ability of the fabric to go back into shape to control the neckline. And I usually start by cutting a, a fairly long piece, and then we'll lay it up against the neckline. And I'm going to start off by making my binding about an inch and a half, which I find works pretty well if you want to end up with about a half inch binding. And then I'll just cut along my chalk lines. And be sure to cut a nice straight line. And so now I have the beginning of my neck edge binding. And I'm going to press it in half in the length direction. So I have a nice piece of a long strip of binding and I'm going to fold it in half. So I have a fold here and then to judge how long to make our binding, I set my neck edge of the garment up with my two shoulder seams matching each other and I lay out the garment nice and smoothly and here center front and here center back. The binding will sit above the body of the garment and because your seam line on your garment is about three-eighths of an inch here, where the binding sits here, the circumference of the binding edge here is actually shorter than the circumference of the seam line. Therefore, the binding actually has to be smaller in order to get it to hug in here. So, how I do that is lay my binding along the body of the garment. And I know from experience that it is in this curve and the shoulder curve that the binding has to be significantly shorter. And I pull it you can see with my, my fingers, I'm pulling it and making the curve. And then I'll do the next portion. And in this part of the side of the neck of the front, you'll need a little bit of pull, but not as much pull. And you'll see I'll just pull very slightly there. And then to get the body of the garment to lay nice against the curve of your shoulder and neck, you also need to pull in this section at the seam line, shoulder seam, fairly significantly. So you can see I'm going to actually stretch this pretty well. And then across to the center back, again, it's like this portion of the garment. I don't need to pull very much, I just need to pull a little bit. And then I'm going to cut this off. And I always double check by laying this back up. And in general, on the half of the garment, which is what we have in half of the binding, you're going to end up being uh, anywhere from one to two inches shorter binding. So the next thing that we need to do is to sew the center back seam. So I'm opening them up so I have the right sides together because I don't like to have to back stitch to secure these stitches because it will add bulk and so I like to use quite a small stitch length and then we'll press this open and so we have a nice binding in the garment and we're ready to put the binding onto the garment to do that we'll quarter the binding now we'll quarter the garment you will see that your quarter marks on your sides are significantly below your shoulder seam. And we'll place the binding onto the garment. I like to use the seam of the binding at center back of the garment. And pin that. Pin the side. And you'll see that the binding is a good deal smaller. And that's what you want because interlock especially tends to grow and what you want to do is to control the neck edge so it is going to lay nice and flat against your body. I stitch this on my conventional machine first on a basting stitch 
and that way you can check it and if your binding is incorrect it's very easy to take off before you serge it. And I like to start at center back and you can see the center back seam of the binding. And again I want to stitch it about a quarter of an inch. When I sit down to serge we'll serge at 3 8 This is the back portion and in here I'm going to stretch the binding slightly very similarly to what we did when we were judging the size of the binding. So I'll stretch it just a small amount and stitch. And you can see here the binding is much shorter than this curve of the neck and that's good, that's what you want. And we'll stretch it, the binding, to meet the garment. And you'll see that I make sure I sew in a nice curve. The garment itself is laying flat on my machine and I'll shape the binding. I'll shape the binding to match the curvature of the garment. And reposition my work. And you can see here, this is the U shape portion of the scoop neck and again that's the area that's going to get stretched significantly so in this portion get coming down to there I'm going to stretch the binding just a small amount and get this thread out of our way and now I'm ready to go around that part of the u-shaped neck that we want to sh control so it lays against the body and I'm stretching the binding to fit it, but I'm stretching it more here than at center front. Line those cut edges really nicely and sew in a nice smooth curve. And do the same thing on the other side of center front. And you can see just by turning it down with your hands how well that is going to look. If you are really unsure, press it and slip it over your head and see what it looks like. If the binding is looking too big, just remove your basting stitches, shorten your binding and put it on again. If it's too small, it will really pucker in here. So we'll just sit down to the serger and serge that. And my serger is set up, if I cut a small amount off, I'll have a 3 8 inch seam. When you serge this, you don't need to be conscientious to pull anywhere because you've controlled that with your basting stitches. And I'm going to cross over where I began. And then serge off. And I like to press this on the ham initially and then we'll give it a second press. And you want to make sure that the edge of your seam is pushed down. You don't want a, a roll in it, a little lip like this. You want it nice and flat. And then I'm going to lay this out so you can see the body see it as though it would lie on the body and I'm going to give it another steam again because what I want is in here to make sure that I have a really nice curve for the scoop neck and so I want to leave, steam it flat so we'll put it on the mannequin